Well, hi everyone. I thought it was time for an update about the reconstruction efforts to restore traffic to Interstate 40 in Eastern Tennessee and Western North Carolina. First, I wanna thank everyone who contributed super thanks or simply watched and commented on the uh, most recent video I did on this. As I indicated, I was gonna donate all the YouTube proceeds generated by that video to a charity in North Carolina, which I did uh, just to send over $350 to Samaritan's Purse. So thanks again, everyone. Now we can see from this current road closure map in North Carolina that there's still extensive roadway outages throughout the region. Here's a warning from the North Carolina DOT website. Limited truck routes and potentially hazardous road conditions in areas impacted by Helene. I-40 and I-26 are closed near the Tennessee border. Vehicles under 30 feet may use roads marked with truck closures on the map. Trucks over 30 feet should not use roads marked as truck closures and follow the routing for trucks over 30 feet. Hazardous limited supplies and traffic delays remain in the affected areas. Obey all signs and barricades. So we can see this line of road closure indicators. This is along I-40 next to the Pigeon River. So I'll mark that area here. Now as a reminder, the reason why these several miles of roadway are closed south of the Tennessee line in Western North Carolina is the tremendous flooding that occurred from the aftermath of Hurricane Helene passing through the region. This was at the end of September, 2024. So you can see there's very steep valley walls through this stretch of I-40 next to the Pigeon River and the river enlarged and increased velocity such that it scoured the embankment fill. And there was a loss of roadway section there. So fortunately, nobody went into the void. But you see the extensive damage that was done. Now this is a stretch of US Route 74 where the road was damaged. This is east of this I-40 area. I'm just gonna show a short video segment showing the force of this water. Now I wanna think of you or who alerted me to this story. And it's in response to a lot of people saying that they have thought the FEMA response has been inadequate or ineffective in large swaths of the impacted area. Here's an example a headline that what I'm referring to here. So the New York Post has this exclusive article and I'll have a link to this article in the description because I think it's great. But the headline here is West Virginia boys, as they're being called, move a literal mountain to build a road so Helene victims can finally return home. Nothing short of miraculous. So these are a group of coal miners from West Virginia that brought in equipment, came into the area, and went to work. So they're clearing out a huge landslide area. I'll quote from this article. Blue collar workers prevailed over bureaucracy in Hurricane Helene ravaged North Carolina, by rebuilding a highway at breakneck speed on their own terms, allowing residents to finally return home. So coal miners from West Virginia, whom locals have lovingly dubbed the West Virginia Boys, moved a mountain in just three days to reopen a 2.7 mile stretch of Highway 64 between Bat Cave and Chimney Rock washed away by Helene. So I think they are clearing landslide debris as well as placing new fill, uh, replacement fill. So let's just sh show you this area of chimney rockets east of this I-40 mess. You can see the stretch that is now open. So this is the stretch that they restored. Although the article says Highway 64, Google Maps would indicate it's a section of 74, although it says alternate 74. So I'm not sure if that's a dual designation there for that roadway, but clearly there's a new section that's been reopened in the stretch between those two cities. So that has to be it. Now we're continuing on with this article. Talked about people that haven't been to their house for nearly a month. And here's another description here. On Friday, the post watched while the miners balanced a bulldozer and two excavators on the bank of the newly widened Broad River to shift the final 20-ton granite boulder into place to restore access between the two towns. The miners, who were all volunteering their time, were too sheepish about building a highway without legal permission to speak on the record. So they're not looking for fame or fortune. They're just doing what they think is the right thing and helping these people out. This article goes on to say, FEMA, 
North Carolina Department of Transportation and the local sheriff's office all visited the site but turned a blind eye to the unsanctioned build. That was probably smart. Now let's jump back to Western North Carolina. Here's an article from ENR. Again, I'll have a link in the description. Helene recovery progresses with road water contracts. The caption here says the North Carolina Department of Transportation has awarded an initial $10 million contract to shore up Interstate 40 following damage from Hurricane Helene September 27th. This article indicates North Carolina and Tennessee transportation departments are charging ahead with a long list of road repairs, including two Tennessee bridges that were destroyed by floodwaters on state highways. In Tennessee, the state's first progressive design build PDB contract was awarded October 2nd to Keywood Infrastructure South to expedite the replacement of two bridges destroyed by floodwaters. Both bridges on State Route 107 in Greene County and State Route 81 in Washington County are scheduled to reopen in June 2025. So I'll show you these areas on the map. Here's a website for Kiwit. The Tennessee Department of Transportation notes that its utilization of the PDB method also used by Florida Department of Transportation in its project to re rebuild Sanibel Causeway following Hurricane Ian is made possible by the state's Transportation Modernization Act. Survey and design are underway as is site cleanup and removal of bridge pieces in the right-of-way. Tennessee DOT says, with construction expected to begin in January 2025, with both bridges open to traffic in June 2025, and final project completion in August. Additionally, repair plans are taking shape along Interstate 40 between Tennessee and North Carolina, which remains closed after multiple landslides and washouts, including on the North Carolina side, where the swollen Pigeon River completely washed away two of the four lanes on the state's busiest highway. That roadway section before this disaster carried 26,000 vehicles per day. So let's just talk about progressive design build project delivery for a second. And this is a summary of a search that I did. Combines the benefits of early contractor involvement with the all-inclusive responsibility of design build. It's an innovative alternative to traditional design build that can offer advantages like cost containment and schedule compression. So this is about the fastest way you can get a project built these days. There's an overview of this process on the FHWA website. Again, I'll include a link in the description. Here's an article from Citizen Times. North Carolina DOT says the estimated repair time for I-40 is currently unknown, though it seems early 2025 is the earliest the interstate will be fully reopened. That would be a miracle if they could do it that quickly. On Monday, the agency announced that it had signed a $10 million contract with Wright Brothers, and I mentioned that contract earlier, with incentives to stabilize I-40's westbound lanes to open to some traffic by January 4th. That was just another article describing that contract. So we have uh, Wright Brothers, and the people installing the soil anchors is GSI, which stands for Geostabilization International. They do a lot of highway embankment stabilization projects throughout the United States and, and beyond, I'm sure. So you can see from this ENR article, that's exactly what they're doing. They're essentially installing soil nails to hold the remaining embankment in place. And in due course, they'll have to bring in a tremendous amount of new fill and compact it and bring it up to the existing grade of the current roadway and then install pavement and, and get on with things. But this is such a narrow valley. I imagine once they get this set of lanes stabilized, it will permit truck traffic that can bring in rock and soil fill that can be used to place the missing portion of the embankment. And I covered the soil nail installation on a, another project I've been following, which is Wyoming DOT's Teton Pass rebuild. And this is just a, the, the darker brown is a series of soil nails connected with a steel mesh. And they work from the top of the slope to the bottom of the slope. Now, in response to my previous videos, some of you pointed out that there was some controversy for routing this section of I-40 south of the Tennessee line through this area of Western North Carolina. And many of you indicated that it was politically motivated. I don't know all the ins and outs, but certainly the critics were right in that this area was very flood prone. And once damage occurred, it's very, very difficult to access to affect repair in any reasonable amount of time. So this section of the road that's currently out of I-40 that took 15 years to build and it was completed in 1968. There was a huge rock fall in 2009. That's the one that blocked the uh, tunnel. 
The latest incident has caused many people on both sides of the border to renew calls for relocating I-40 to a less dangerous and remote area. And people have commented the crucial east-west transportation artery should never have been built along the wild, jagged, remote pigeon. Instead, I-40 should curve gently along the French Broad River Valley further to the east. Yes, that river also flooded in Hurricane Helene, but its valley is wider, its elevation lower, and its slope more gradual, making the route into Tennessee far more accessible and repairs easier. It's time to reroute vital I-40 more sensibly along the French Broad. So they may have uh, excellent points there, although the focus is going to be to restore the functionality of that highway where it currently sits, and then long term perhaps uh, they'll look at doing something that's less vulnerable to these types of events. Here's an area of the French Broad River that they're speaking of. So let me know what you think about this. I mean, it's, it's quite a story. It's all hands on deck and you've got a lot of private citizens rolling up their sleeves and, and having meaningful impacts to these local communities as far as getting them access, get, getting them some semblance of their former life back sooner rather than later. So I want to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support as well as those of you who have provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. I'll roll credits here at the end. I've got a lot of new exciting videos coming up, so please stay tuned for future videos. Thanks very much, everyone.